Welcome to another tutorial of Coding Freaks. Today I want to do something different in comparison to the last tutorials I did. Um, today I want to go into a specific problem I encountered uh, yesterday actually. And instead of just solving it and whatever, I decided to share it with you and to solve it together with you. So let me first explain my problem and uh, then go to the solution I found. I think it's uh, kind of weird. So first of all, what you see here is uh, a regular Azure DevOps organization with all the projects here. And as you can see, here are two projects called Checker Old and Stacker Old. And what I did here, or what the task is, I want to move projects from team version control because those are old projects. They have team version control, not, not Git configured. I want to move them to um, Git version control. And in order to do it, in the first step, I renamed them. So how I did this, I, I went to the organization settings and I didn't even know that this is possible, by the way. And I went to the projects and then I discovered that here is a rename option here on the side. And uh, I was pretty happy because this way I could keep the source of the old version as it is. And now I wanted to create a new project called Checker, like the old one was called uh, the day before yesterday. And I experienced a weird problem. Let me show it to you. I went here and I did Checker as the name, doesn't matter, whatever. So it is Git now. And when I hit Create button, I get an error. And I was kind of confused. After looking at it for a while, I, I recognized, okay, I understand. This means that he found four workspaces on the team version control side, which means on Azure DevOps side, in the workspace cache. So in case you don't know what this is, in uh, here's um, team version control is a more centralized version control in comparison to Git, which means the server always ought to be to know all the details of all uh, you know, um, work which is spread out to some clients, workers, or whatever. So in order to do this, team version control is um, built in a way that it builds up um, a knowledge, if you will, of the remote workstations uh, you are working on. So after I got this, I wondered how can I get rid of those workspaces here, which are uh, shown here on TF version control side, in order to create my new old project. And I knew that there is a tooling called TF. This TF is a command line tooling. And um, this is known from the old team uh, foundation server. And it's still working because team version control is still the same. So I wondered if it's possible to connect to this. Um, the first thing I noticed, it's not that easy to connect to a Azure DevOps team version control because I don't have any username password combination and team version control is not aware about the new fancy stuff uh, which comes with Azure DevOps the way. So the way I uh, bought it to work was a little bit clumsy. Let me show it. The first thing I did was I went to Visual Studio because Visual Studio has the Team Explorer built in, which is a great tool to, co to communicate with team version control. So what I did here is I connected to one of the projects, doesn't matter which one, on this organization, as you can see here, and I brought it um, to this folder. What I did was just checking out one file so that the workspace is there. So as you can see here, now I have a local workspace on this machine. And this means um, that I have kind of a connectivity in direction to um, Azure DevOps team version control. So that means if I go to this folder, which is the same, you can see it here on the top, and I went to the same folder, but I don't do it in a regular console, but I do it in a Visual Studio shell. So this is, uh, by the way, as you can, as you can see, this is a new Windows terminal. And if you like, I will share the settings so that you can get this button too. You go to the settings of um, the terminal and here you can see 
the entry, which brings this uh, nice little icon of Visual Studio. And basically, you don't have to remember this stuff here, the command. All you need to do is you go to your local Visual Studio installation um, and search for the shortcut in the start menu, because you will have one like here. And you see the developer command prompt for Visual Studio. And if you go to more and uh, to go to the location, this is a German version of saying go to the file location of this shortcut, you get the batch file shortcut and go to the properties. And what you see here is the target, which is comspec, blah, blah, blah. You copy this out and bring it to the config here and just take care of double backslashes uh, uh, for escaping the backslashes uh, inside the path and that's it. And now you give it a name and whatever. And when you save this configuration, you get this nice button in Windows Terminal, which says, hey, you know what? Open a command prompt. And when you hit TF, oh, TF here, you see that team version uh, control is now available for you in the command line which is not in the normal one because the, env uh, the environment variables are not set correctly, the path variables. And basically that's what this Visual Studio command prompt does. Anyway, now I am in the folder, which, let me see, which as you can see here at the top, let me, maybe can I, yeah, this folder and this folder, I like it, is the same basically. Uh, okay, let me get rid of it. So, and now when I um, use the TF uh, uh, tooling, let me minimize this and uh, bring it on here, a little bit more space maybe. So what can I do now here? What's available when you use the TF exa, which is the command, like a command line interface to the team version control, you can go and say, TF workspaces with S on the end. Uh, and if you hit enter, you basically get the local workspaces, which he sees. So that's good for the first moment. He knows that on this collection here, it's the old name uh, of team version control. It's called project collection, which is another word for uh, the database um, you are connected to. And the project collection basically in Azure DevOps is called an organization. Okay, um, now when I see this, it's not, you know, it's not the same uh, as here in the error message. When I bring it up again and say create, you can see here are different workspaces which are not listed uh, in this window. There's nothing from those workspaces listed here. It's a bit of a clumsy, let me copy this out and bring it to an editor. Uh, let's, yeah, why not, the good old editor. And let me just do a trick and enter at certain steps because now you can see this list a little bit more better. It's a certain combination. You learn in a second what this means. You will learn it. Okay, cool. So that's not the point. Um, now you have to be in a certain role, which is, uh, I, I think, source code uh, admin on the team version control size in order to do the following. You do TF workspaces and tell him any computer and any owner. So this is basically saying, show me all workspaces you've got on server side. When you do this, you get a list and this list is containing the workspace, the owner, this is a German word for owner, sorry for German, but anyway, the computer on which the works, the computer name on which this workspace is. So what you know now that Visual Studio Team Services old name or Team Foundation Server or Azure DevOps, call it uh, or name it. They, um, this tool is remembering each checkout command, each connect, and creating, if you will, a proxy workspace on his side, on its side, for every developer connecting to it. So this is because of the centralized approach of team version control. And that's why most people 
don't stick to it, like me. I'm just, uh, you know, moving to, to Git more and more. And now in this situation, my customer wants to move to Git too. And that's why I do all this stuff. So what can I do now? When I go uh, and say t workspaces, and now I give him one of those names. Let me see what happens when I call ByteBitter, which is basically the name of the computer with the same options, owner and computer any. He gives me this one. And now I have the opportunity to go to format XML, like, you know, many, what the, my, you know, I, I, I uh, put some coffee on my keyboard. It's never a good idea, but now some keys are, you know, reluctant. Uh, to work okay let's go and see what happens now you get the full details and as you can see it's xml which is always a sign well this comes from the 2000 years <laughs> and it indeed does and this is um this is so important because this information the owner unique id is exactly what this id is so uh, as you can see, first of all, Visual Studio uh, or Azure DevOps is not complaining about all workspaces on this side, but on some of them. This is because there are more than there's more than one project here. So if I do the same with the Stacker old project and enter Stacker, it should complain again. And now you get more workspaces. You see, it's depending on the project, but it's cached on the organization not on the project side so that's why we have to get rid of all the pro the um, those entries so let's do it then so what you see here is this owner unique id and now something weird happened because there is another sub command of tf which is pretty similar to workspaces but it's workspace so that confused me a while because for some reason, I don't know, the workspace says command, which we used already, has a remove option, which is not working. Remove. The workspace uh, command has a delete option. So that's the correct one. You need the delete option for some reason. So in, what he wants now from you is the, uh, exactly this combination of information. So um, let me see if I paste in this guy and remember we have ddf1 uh, with uh, a certain id in this list we have to remember this and now i paste in here the workspace name semicolon and the um, owner unique id and when i enter this one i get a question yes and let me do the list again of all workspaces so that we can compare this list so as you can see ddf1 is still here and now it's it's gone so basically all we need to do so that's why this message from azure devops is giving us this list because it seems to be weird this list it this list is because it's easy to copy out all the information you need to give it to tf workspace delete so what we do now is tf workspace delete let's see this one no slash delete it's kind of the old way to do it okay this one i think by the way i don't know if there is a uh is there a force option let's see I don't know exactly. Uh, Login, file location, permission, private, command, new, no prompt maybe. Let's try out no prompt. So delete this one with no prompt. Maybe this is even better. So now I have to do the next one. Let me head over here and paste in the next. Yeah, it works. No prompt is even better. See, uh, let me take now the last one and replace it here. And now let's see what uh, TF workspaces 
uh, owner every computer every gives up it's only those and I think because this was the list for the checker project I should be able to create it now so let's go here let's leave the description let's use the devdeer agile template which we have and now create it and let's see see now he's happy and you can create another checker project because this uh, again was name checker before and we have a new project with git version control now all i have to do is to do all this stuff in uh, for stacker too because stacker is now i think complaining let's see if i create yeah correct he has this one uh, two workspaces left let's see so we can complete this stuff he's happy and now maybe this one has a weird name because the computer names are sometimes a little bit weird and now uh, let's see if I can create the stacker project using the same DJ and he seems to be pretty happy. So I think it's not complicated, bec uh, but this comes from the old days, uh, all this stuff. And that's why I th thought it would be a good idea to share it with you guys. Uh, so maybe you are in the same situation and hopefully it helps. See you.